Welcome back, everyone, to the LEC Spring Season, where it's time for Mad Lions versus Astralis. Astralis have a brand new lineup for the season, and I'm joined by Cable for a closer look at their opening game, specifically how they set up the team fights. Cable, what are you going to show us today? So I'm just going to show you how team fights work in general, and when you don't draft a team fight composition, which Astralis didn't really draft a good one against SK's comp, how hard it becomes to you to actually initiate these fights and get good engages. So I'll start with the first clip here. So you can see White Knight's actually moving down towards the bot side to clear out the bot wave. And there's going to be a fight in this dragon. Now, the big problem that Astralis faced in this team fight before it starts, first thing is Zanzar has got hooked. And the second thing is all of his carries are sitting in this choke point. And if your carries are in a choke point, it means it's really hard for them to actually get involved in the fight. So you can see as the clip progresses, they're running away. And now they're running away. If you watch Jeskla, he's only hit once. He's got a Q off. Nuke Dog does get a good shockwave. Jess is getting a few autos in, but in the end, they're running away. So it's really hard for them to actually counter engage or get some damage off. Mm -hmm. um, is this also a side effect of kind of the composition they drafted? And if so, what were the issues? Yeah, I think when you draft things like Nidley and the Renekton's up there in the first place, you have a set who wants to dive in as well. It's really hard for you to get damage off if you don't go in first. So I think there's a second clip. Yeah, we have second as well. clip. Second clip, exact same scenario, same area of the map as well. I'll just draw the free ending again. We have another little choke point here, uh -huh. Astralis. It's a really bad positioning again. If, as the clip plays out, you'll see. As we watch it progress, you see the carries of Astralis, Nuke Duck's far back, Jester's far back. It's so hard for them to actually get involved in the fight. Promise Q decides, well, let's try and get them their front line into our back line. Doesn't really work. Jester and, and Nuke Duck, if you keep their, your eyes on them, they're not really hitting anything. They're far, far back in the, in the fight, and they just lose their front line before the fight starts. So this is just the whole problem you face when you play these non-team fight compositions with mm -hmm like no point and click engage like a Hecarim. So in this situation, of course, this just happened. So logically, maybe they should have said, well, hey guys, let's not go into that choke point mm -hmm. again. But that's not, that's easier said than done when you're in kind of your first games on the LEC stage yeah, or in the Rift. It's much easier said than done, especially when you want to contest Dragon on blue side. You have to get into that choke point and get into the river. So SK played, SK played well. They stopped them getting into the choke point. So that's two examples from the choke point. I think we have a third one as well, just we to do. kind of put the nail in the coffin of how these team fights are not going in Astralis' favor. And now this is a bit of a 4v5, but the problem is they have to face check. And if you have to face check, it's really hard for you to get the good engage. So Treats gets the hook. And if you keep your eye on Jeskla and uh, Nuke Duck on the side here, these two players, just these are the main damage dealers Astralis need to start doing damage. Zanzer is not going to provide too much in the fight. These are the people that need to hit. And you can see Jeskla goes for the wave. Look at the amount of damage SK's carry is doing on the, on the front line of Astralis. Nuke Duck can hardly get a, a Q off. Jeskla's hit two or three times in the whole fight. So. The fact that they're running away the whole game and they're never actually running forwards into the enemy team means that the carries can never really get any damage off. And in turn, you basically lose the fight 10 times out of 10. So uh, with that knowledge in the back pocket and knowing that they will have reviewed this as well, what adaptations do we want to see versus Mad Lions? So I think if you want to draft these late game, mid game team fight compositions, you need to draft champions that can fit well into it. I think SK identified that in the draft, they got a Hecarim, they got a Gragas, Victor, these champs are just so good at zone control in river fights, especially when it's like Drake meta kind of, mm -hmm. making sure you set up Drakes, get the team fight going. Champions like Nidalee are good for snowballing the game in the early game, but in terms of mid to late game, it's so hard to actually close the game out without engage and without team fight sort of priority. Or yeah, like don't make it too difficult for yourself, exactly. I think is what we can take away from this. Secondly, I do want to touch on the Mad Lions as well. Yesterday, Mad Lions made their debut. We're going to take a look at them in a second against G2 Esports, which is a tall order. Um, what were your impressions of their first games and what do you expect to see today? The thing is, the Mad Lions, I think the early game was really good. You could see they had a really good draft going into the game. They had three winning lanes. Uh, El Yoya in the jungle matchup got some kills. They picked up the first tower and stuff like this. The problem is when the first towers, the tier ones were taken down, kind of looked like they were pulling the trigger a bit too much individually. Not so much as a team, but I think the humanoid jumping in too aggressively, stepping up too far in mid waves, just gave G2 kind of free kills here and there, which allowed them to kind of crawl back in the game and get objectives. Yeah, and of course, G2 is the team uh, least likely to not capitalize on yeah. the mistakes of their enemies. So both teams are looking to bounce back after day one. So let's see who pulls it off. Well, we're going to find out as both of these teams lost yesterday. However, one of them maybe should not have. Um, I know when we were watching the Mad Lions game against G2 yesterday backstage, Al Yoya on the Lilia, he went for an early tower dive uh -huh. um, you know, against Reckless and uh, uh, Mickey. It looked a little hairy for a moment or two, but it ended up being like two quick kills. And, and from there, I was kind of hopeful for Mad Lions, but it just didn't pay off as the game played. Yeah, at the end of the day, G2 mid game a little bit too strong, but I liked a lot of what we saw from Mad early into things. Let's see what they've got prepared for us as we get into draft. Nailed it. Beep, 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 
I genuinely love it. The music, the animation, uh, the, the graphic, everything. It's absolutely fantastic. So welcome to Picks and Bands. Madlines on the blue side, Astralis on the red side. This is the inverse of what happened yesterday. Those power picks that we've seen over and over and over over the course of our last eight games. Um, Talia, Gragas, Pantheon, Renekton, Lilia, Thresh. All these picks have shown their faces. And I think that's more gates. picks than, yeah, bans op uh, well, as options. But, you know, every once in a while we see a few of them sneak through. It's about what are people willing to let open. Honestly, I'm a little sad. I want to see some Pantheon jungle. I've, I've been waiting. It's a, it's a spicy pick. It is definitely uh, hot right now, but we'll have to wait for another game before we get that locked in for us. Now, um, uh, me and me and Deficio actually had a quick conversation backstage. We were talking about the previous game. We said, like, Vitality's comp was a good comp, but that was like a broken week one comp. You know, easy execute, very clear conditions, long range engage, etc. cetera. So uh, I say, let's get some broken week one comps in here. Make it, let's make it a little easier on ourselves so we can execute uh, precisely. As you should be doing at the beginning of a season when teams have not been as practiced and as refined or precise yeah. as you would want them to be. Specifically, I would love Astralis to play a good week one. After Al Yoya's debut yesterday um, and the impact he had on that Lilia, despite the fact that he's not banned, Pantheon, Graves, Talia removed from the pool. Astralis making it very clear. Don't want none of those junglers. Uh, Panthea, uh, the Olaf was banned away on the Mad Lion side. So that means Zenzar is now going to lean on the Hecarim and is following the Alistair and we've got a Kaisa for Kazi on the Mad Lion. That's the start of a good week yep. one comp right there. You got All-Star, <laughs> Hecarim of course, make it very easy. And uh, Kaisa can run into some problems, right? Pretty limited on range. Of course, Ultimate can get her out of some tricky situations, uh, but not when, you know, there's just this guy turbo speeding at you. That can be a little bit difficult to deal with. Now a Twisted Fate for Humanoid. I do like this a lot. Mad Lions, I feel like uh, peak Mad Lions in like 2020, for example, were Mad Lions that could be a little bit more proactive with plays, find plays, collapse on silence move Humanoid around just a bit, so the TF is going to give him that option. And of course, with the jungle pool being so heavily hit, yeah. Alyoya will be locking in the Nidalee. Just to highlight this for a moment, Pantheon 100% bans. The eighth game uh, we've seen in spring, the eighth ban in a row. We've seen the Hecarim, we've seen the Graves, we've seen the Tilly, we've seen the Olaf, we've seen the Nidalee. So that's the one champion we haven't seen in the jungle just yet, and we have not yet seen a Samira. So we're gonna get our hands on Samira for the first time. A lot of projectiles that can come from Nidalee, from Twisted Fate, from yeah. Kaisa. So I, I'm liking this Loki. I mean, Astralis have thrown down the gauntlet right now with their, with their first three here. Their team fight is looking really good already. AOE, engage, damage. They've pretty much ticked every single box. And now with their solo lanes, they can, you know, go for the counter picks. They can get some more niche options for themselves. Like, they've got a lot of room to move here. Whereas Mad Lions. You know, they've got good combinations, right? Twist Fate plus Nidalee, a really good combo. You know, Worlds, we saw a lot of that with like a Camille on the top side. You move together, you make plays happen. The gold card make the spears super easy to connect with. Um, but they're going to have to find ways to really utilize that early on because going even already, like even without seeing the final two picks for both teams, going even into team fights is maybe problematic for Mad Lions. And I'm thinking about the power of that Blade Will on Samira as well. You know, the, the ability to destroy those projectiles, the impact that that can have, how game-changing it can be. True. Every single fight, every single cooldown, is Jeskla practiced on it? Is his trigger finger ready to fight it? The last two bands from Astralis is the Camille and the Renekton, followed by the Gragas, as well as the Galio from the Mad Lions. I am very excited because I love playing Samira. She just feels yeah. so great. Honestly, I say Orianna here and then, okay, oh, nice. gets locked nice, out. Nice, I, nice. I was going to say Orianna here because it's safe mid, pairs well with the rest of your team, and then safe counter pick for White Knight in the top side. Of course, into that TF, can eat the lane pretty easily, get probably a little bit later on, and then put that ball on top of an All Star and Hecarim. It is easy, easy, easy. Anybody else as well? I mean, come on, Protect was going to be so well. I'm not going to steal your thunder this time around. Once we see the last two picks from Mad Lions, Let's see how you would like White Knight and Astralis to round out the composition. Nautilus for Kaiser in that bottom lane. Yep. And Pretty expected, I would say. 
as far as combinations go with that Kaisa set maybe is another option, Leona, but for me, the Nautilus is the way to go, especially when you see that Twist Fate in Italy next to it. Again, it's about setting up, making sure you can land spears and whatnot. But now Armut, because he has to go for this blind pick in the top, so I'm really not sure what he's going to go for. It's going to be the Aatrox, uh, which, I mean, uh, does give you some, you know, earlier skirmishing here. It's it's a decently enough safe blind, but you have options like a GP now uh, can really be problematic for... Uh, there you go, a cannon can also be very problematic for an Aatrox early on into the game. And now with cannon as your flank option for the rest, like Astralis just have like the strongest 5v5 comp you can get. It's like top three 5v5s that are on the market nowadays. Top three 5v5s in the market. If I could rewind seven minutes before picks and bans, you were saying you would like to see some broken week one team comp. Dude, this is a week one draft right That now. was exactly what I wanted to land. On the scale of zero to broken week one, yeah. How high up are we for the Astralis comp? Well, I mean, it's it's like it's very easy to execute, right? Like you have multiple people that can find engage. So if you have TP, it's going to be Kennen. If you don't, you can have Promise Q find a flank Zanzar. Like you've just got pretty much everything. Whereas Mad Lions have like uh, probably like a week one of plans sort of draft, right? A little bit more difficult to pull off here. They still haven't learned that Aatrox is maybe not the best top laner to go for in the world, but uh, we'll <laughs> see if they can actually pull it off here because we are going to need to see El Yoya Humanoid have an impact early on. I am such a fan of the way you phrased that week one play-in. So it means they haven't quite learned in the meta. It doesn't fit. Let's see if Mad Lions can pull it off as they take on Astralis. No. Ender, you're such a great singer. Absolutely <laughs> great singer. I love that you do that every intro. See whether or not Medi Vedi can follow with the same level of uh, capabilities. Doubt we it. Turn our attention back to the game. Spellbook for Humanoid on TF. Armut up in the top lane. I'm going to be watching how he plays this Aatrox. And, and honestly, how much White Knight can actually get against him. The cannon, especially in the early stages, definitely going to be super frustrating to deal with. Yeah, I mean, the only way, like, Kennen really gets punished in this lane is if he, he's pushing, but he doesn't quite bounce it off tower, so it gets frozen, like, right in front of him, and then then there's room for something to happen. But I, I think Aatrox plus Nidalee very likely doesn't get even get a kill with a first gank, right? So Flash at best, there's going to be a spell book for White Knight too. He has, uh, of course, the minion dematerialized, which I love on Kennen. He can struggle a little bit in the wave clear department yeah. just by picking that up. You can really get early pry on the lane and make sure, like, you delete a cannon minion very quickly if you need to get in, get out, and your jungler's on the opposite side of the map, so you don't want to stick around too long. Well, the map has been uh, cut in half for now. Zanzara starting on his blue, Alyoya starting on his. Armor will make his way back up to the top lane. White Knight will see that immediately, give the information. Now I'm going to keep my eyes on Nuke Duck and Humanoid, see if they're gonna, uh, going to be able to ward up the chicken camps. And actually noticing it now, Humanoid's already got a ward just behind those raptors there as Kaiser starts to step forward. So Kaiser and Kazi will give themselves an early little advantage in the bottom lane. Very good damage yeah. onto Jessica, I promise you. That's a huge trade win for them. That's really nice too. And, and I think that we should see this more when you have uh, sort of like melee support versus the All-Star because you'll notice Phase Rush All-Star. We see a lot more Phase Rush All-Star. It of course makes it much easier for him to connect that extra stun with his E that has that little wind up time. Um, but level one trades, Aftershock versus no real, real combat effectiveness yeah. until you have access to that E, you can take those very aggro trades and Kaiser took next to no damage going in there. Yeah, thank you, Observers, for highlighting Nuke Duck. He pushed the wave in, immediately steps forward, puts down that ward, something that Ender is very excited to see. Interestingly, didn't catch out. El Yoya heading towards his red, though. And uh, th these are the types of maneuvers that I wonder, like, are they intentional, you know? Do you yeah. have, have they seen, like, did Nuke Duck place that same ward yesterday or something where it wasn't so deep in? that it wasn't spotted. Could just be a happy little coincidence there. Of course, El Yoya continues to dodge away from a lot of this and is walking in oh. deep vision mid gank. What's going to be the play here? Because I don't think they actually have a great gank here in mid, although they do have a gold card and there's no cleanse on Nuke Duck. Okay, let's find that. Double buffs up for El Yoya. That was not well done. Dissonance movement speed helped out. And 
Yeah. Well, not even that. Like, uh, El Yoyo stepped forward before Humanoid was in yep. range for gold card. So Nuke Duck's like, okay, I guess I shall leave now. Maybe El Yoyo was calling, flash gold card, flash gold card. I don't think gold card was even primed for that to even happen. <laughs> Regardless of that fact, I was looking at Kaiser. He has placed a just behind the Grom camp um, on the Astralis blue side. So there is a little bit of deep vision there. And White Knight has pushed that wave in towards Armut. And we've, the ward has just timed out as El Yoyo is going to make his way back to the Raptor camp for now. And that bottom lane has now pushed back. Jester and Promiscu a little bit out from their tower. I want to track if that CS numbers can change. Yeah, well, the, the weird thing about El Yoya's path, he's actually very behind right now. Like, not in terms of, like, actual camps. It's 28-25, right? Like, what are you talking about? Well, well, he actually never... This is his first time clearing his Krug camp. He has yet to get a base off. And because he spent so much time around that mid lane, his respawn timers are actually very desynced. So the top side's going to come up about 45 seconds before those Raptors and Krugs are going to return. Meanwhile, Zanzara already in position to go for that full cycle through the camp once again. Fantastic engage. The Wild Rush camp comes out from Jessica, very good damage onto Kazi and Kaiser. Promise Q eating most of that trade, and it does look like Jessica mostly healthy. Naughty, naughty bot lane. That's where, if I'm Zenzar, I am flaming Jessica and Promise Q. Like, that trade doesn't mean anything, right? You're not going to get a gank off. They're just trying to base anyways. And now he lost a little bit of that time that he was going to be able to make up, of course, trying to cover in case El Yoya had a gank for there. Yeah, not going to help out. And we saw in the mid lane there, Nuketai putting a lot of damage onto Humanoid, pushing him out. Now Al Yoya moves his way up north. This minion wave will crash under the tower. Flash available for White Knight. No access to the slicing maelstrom just yet. There's even a teleport being committed Okay. Here. Minion wave is slowly starting to be chipped away. Three minions left for the, the Astralis top laner. Gold card, the javelin Jeez, misses. misses spear. The javelin misses a stunned target. Al Yoya and Humanoid are not on the same page. Here comes Zanzara. It's going to be a devastating charge onto Humanoid. Al Yoya will get into Kugel form and get out. And Astralis cannot find anything in reply. And that was a comedy of errors. It is just a disaster right there. I mean, I love the play, right? Go for the dive before Kennen's level six, right? That's why I use the Twist Fate TP right there. Because once Kennen hits six, that dive not looking so hot. But it's a missed spear, of course, off that play. Humanoid's going to lose a lot of that. Again, El Yoya slowing down is clear, so Zanzara is going to hit level six, and that's what you don't want to happen in this Nidalee matchup. Nidalee wants to be hitting six first. Otherwise, there's this big window where Zanzara was already going to have a big spike, and he is then going to be able to find his moment to look for a play as Nukeduck also hits that six moment. Yeah, and of course, the teleport was committed there, so Nukeduck now not going to have that available. Now, admittedly, back in lane, like, can look through, taking a look through the rest of the map. Armut was able to make his way back up without using that TP. And because White Knight's got a spell book, he swapped over, flashes on cooldown, he's got the Ignite in the inventory for the time being. And Zanzara is very close to level six. We'll see whether or not he can set up any plays. Those ultimates have now been unlocked. He's even gold across the board. And the first few uh, gank attempts It'll be very interesting to review at a later date. White Knight going to walk straight past the control war, didn't step into the bush, didn't check it out. So Madline's fully, fully aware of his exact positions. Yeah, he's just going to end up looping back around here. But this is a moment where really good vision control around this bot side. That deep ward over by the red buff would also see if Humanoid, now level 6, was starting to walk down towards bottom lane, which is where you'd love to get a gank off. Unfortunately, there is, of course, that uh, fake little wind wall that Jeskla has that can block out things like the gold card. And Zanzar is just going to use some pressure on bot and permit to pick that one up. Did you just say fake little wind wall? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it more effective than wind wall? It's like larger area, it moves with you. Why it lasts for less long? Okay, touche. Yeah, it's okay. fake because it's it's just a, it's a it's a knockoff, okay. right? Knock. Okay, I prefer knockoff. Knock yeah, works better it's, for me. it's some sort of knockoff designer brand wind wall. <laughs> like it's still effective. Like ultimately, ultimately, like there's some good out there, but hey, nobody on, says knockoffs are bad, right? They're just they're inspired. I mean, I'm pretty by sure designer else. brands say they're <laughs> so by, uh, inspired by something else. So I like that. Jeskla with his knockoff wind wall. I'm gonna use that one myself. Humanoid destiny available. Is he going to use the gate? Yes, he is. Round two, gold card, javelin toss, slicing maelstrom. White Knight will be able to counter kill, but the skill shots landed. The knockoff wind wall helping out Jeskla. The tower taking down Promise Q. Sansar is here. Out. Armut is looking for Jeskla. Manages to use that darkened blade, flashed away from. Now Armut's going to be the next target. He turns it back around with the Q, and it ends up being a two for two. All right, so one for one 
on the top side, one for one down bottom side. A TP comes out from Armut as well. That's why we wanted the play to happen for Mad Lines before Kennen hit level six, yes. right? And uh, he didn't have the flash that time, but he had his ultimate, so it was enough to trade evenly. Oh, Jeskla, get back here. You're kidding. I'm You're kidding. Armut's going to be able to pick this one up. No, not just yet. There we go. One or two lost autos. And he even committed the ultimate to that one. Three kills to Mad Lions. A bit of a cheeky recall, huh. and Jessica gets punished for that. Yeah. That's Actually, good for I, I wonder, <laughs> since there's still his ultimate, I wonder if there was a way for him to get into that fight. Regardless, uh, poor recall there. But this time around, we get underneath the tower. El Yoya does land the spear, but Ken, of course, had already switched over to that ignite. That helps out finishing off this kill on Dehumanoid, who gets chained CC'd under the tower. You hate to be the one as the twist of fate to pick up turret aggro, but sometimes it just be like that. Yeah, and absolutely the case. It's both sides of the rift, the turret helping out to balance it. And this little trade back and forth is Zansara joins the fray. Armut and Jeskla are really the, the big threats here. And you can see Jeskla respecting the damage Armut can put down until this point. <laughs> I mean, he thinks he's safe with the control yeah. ward, but somehow still gets hit by the W. Here's where Zanzara is very low, so he doesn't really want to commit into the fight. He doesn't necessarily know that Kaisa had been passing back up towards the top lane, but the Herald swap does come through now for both teams. 1k gold advantage here for Matt. And look at the minimap. White Knight has left the bottom lane. He's got no teleport available. Armut is left alone. Now, if Armut continues up towards the Herald, I would anticipate some sort of challenge. So I'll keep my eyes on his movement. Instead, he's maybe going to go and defend the tower against Armut's Aatrox. Zanzara got that ultimate available. You called it out just a few moments ago. And uh, it's going to be available for this engage. Does he pull the trigger? Dredge line goes down to Promise Q. The ultimate comes out and no fight. I was building that one up. I thought they were going to go for it. Instead, Mad Lions, they extend that gold lead. It's 1100 and they've got Rift Herald available. Yeah, and Mad Lions continue to, uh, need to continue to be high pressure gamers, right? As soon as they get the push off in lanes, rotate on over. So Armour had push and bot. He's going to move towards top while the Herald's being started. Same thing happened on the top side of the map where they get those waves in and make plays happen. Humanoid has his TP, has his ultimate ready to go once more. So again, let's use that pressure and continue to try and convert it into more and more here and break that lead open. Because remember, Astralis' team fight is not fair. Like, it, it, it's this is <laughs> like not what you want to play against ever. And of course, if they're able to get to that stage, the thing is, Mad Lines do have a gold lead for now. And if they're able to accelerate this, maybe Astralis may not get to that team fight stage. The thing is, you can never discount, even if you're in a gold deficit, the benefits that you're going to gain as the 5v5. If you get a good shockwave, the yes, slicing sir. maelstrom, the ability to use that knockoff wind wall and how impactful it can be, um, it will have an And influence. the knockoff Katarina ultimate. There, that oh, there you go. She just... Okay, the Katarina one is definitely a worse version. There's no doubt about that. I mean, she gets to move, though. It's like Wild Rift Katarina. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Well, where would you anticipate some of these engages yet? Because there's a couple of plates going down, but neither lane until this very moment. The bot laners have now switched top. Plates are going to be dropping very soon, so you have to anticipate the top lane with maybe Rift Herald. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, like, Astralis are going to be playing around objectives whenever Mad Lions are willingly grouping up. Uh, when they're not grouping up, well, they may just get punished. Jeskla with a good ward, though. We'll see that coming out. He's playing weak side, of course, so he's actually very content to be able to pick up the Krugs while he doesn't really have much support around that area of the map. The rest of Mad Lions now grouping up towards mid. Gold card comes out. The Hex Flash over the wall. Kaiser gets blocked by a couple of melee minions, so not going to be able to line up that dredge. It's just uh, a couple times now in mid lane, the, the coordination has been a little off. Like, Humanoid that time went in too early while the Hex Flash was still being charged by Kaiser. So these are the tiny things I think Mad Lions do need to clean up. I'm seeing a few cracks here. As they get back into the swing of things. But here we are for the Cloud Drake. Cloud Drake, Astralis, they want that CDR. They want that team fight. It is time to go for it. Zanzara stepping forward, looking for a charge. If he can devastate Mad Lions. I am going to take this brief moment. That miscoordination on a composition like Mad Lions is oh, nerve wracking. That's a good one. This one works out. Hex Flash, Dredge Line. Zanzara gets taken. I think it was the Ignite that burned him down while it worked this time around. Remember in Draft, Endo, you were talking about how a Plains Week 1 essence <laughs> of Draft, right? Where we're not sure about the Aatrox and the level of execution required to make this work is higher than what the Astralis composition is doing. But it is very fair to say, plus 1,500 gold, this Rift Herald should get a couple of plates and help get out of here, Boot 
puts Kazi out of dodge. See, that, that's actually really cute because, uh, so the turret plate money will still go to El Yoya because he was the one to place the Herald, but that put Karzi out of range to get the bonus gold from that turret. So uh, nice little move there from the MSI champion. And what I would like to say is <laughs> That I was not ready for. That I was not ready for. Promise Q, of course, has that belt under his belt. And now Promise Q ready for his life. Humanoid will teleport into the fray and get jumped on. There's so much damage coming out from Jessla. Stepping forward, White Knight with a slicing maelstrom. Kazi stays alive for now and no killer instinct available to him. We we're talking about money just a moment or two ago. Armored, by the way, left uncontested uh, for so long. He's plus 40 CS over White Knight's cannon. And remember, Cannon was the last pick. He knew what he was running into, has not had the opportunity. And this Aatrox is in a position where he can be hugely influential. Ooh, are they going to look for a play now? On to White Knight. No ultimate to save himself under the tower. No flash either. And a big minion wave building up. That's the TP from Humanoid. Mad Lions are going to run this play over and over again. There's no flash. There's no ultimate. This little electric hamster will be sent back to the fountain. It will also secure the first tower of the game. And while that is going on, Nuketok is putting some pressure top, but the multi-man stack can continue the siege if Mad Lions want to. Yes, they can. I mean, uh, one more time I have to point out, I, I love the changes to Rocket Belt as a really solid all-around first item now, because Humanoid's going to love that whenever he ports into these side lanes. Usually Twist Fates would have like the Rod of Ages, and they wait till their third item to get that extra range, right, with something like the Rapid Fire. But now with the Rocket Belt, you can get in so much quicker, guarantee those gold cards, and just increases your range of effectiveness when going for any sort of these side lane plays. In a similar way, White Knight's going to be working on that Proto Belt too, but he sidetracked himself a bit with that Seeker's Arm Guard, and as you mentioned, down 50 CS now. He is not packing that same punch as a Gore Drinker Aatrox is. Gigantic, gigantic difference. Armut's also got the Flash and the Teleport available, so if any of these rinse and repeat plays that we've seen from Mad Lions, which is just, you know, fight on the side lane. Um, get Al Yoya and Humanoid to help out Armut. Hopefully land the skill shots together and then pick up the kills, you know, despite the first one going awry. Just me just being a little bit mean. Um, it has worked out at Mad Lions. One tower to zero, plus 4,000 gold, plus three kills in the lead. And um, it's just a very, very big advantage for Mad Lions to be playing from. Plus there's a level advantage here. Armut's going to chase down White Knight. Yeah, I mean, Armut's going to go for this Does he win this White Knight's isolated. He absolutely wins this fight. It's level 12 to level 11. White Knight's ultimate does absolutely nothing. nothing. He's just going to get chased all the way down this bottom lane. And Armut's going to laugh at him. Yeah, Zanzara's going to try to do something in return. Though Gold Card comes up. That buys a couple extra seconds. Noop Duck, come on, protect. Plus Dissonance will help out. And... Zanzara is able to run down Humanoid. Yeah, Cadrol, Cadrol. Yeah, uh, we got need the weak side police. Uh, <laughs> good lord. Promise Q is going to jump in onto Kazi. He's going to use the wild rush away as quickly as possible. Zanzara is going low, burning Ignite, taking him down just as the next target. He's been jumped on and zoned away. Nuketuck has got the shockwave available. And the Javelin Toss will not quite find its target, so Mad Lions find themselves two quick kills. Yep, nicely done by them. I mean, this is exactly what they need to do. Again, use that pressure, convert it into more. Now they're going to be able to knock down this mid lane tower. Armu went from, you know, a questionable pick in draft, we thought, now sitting 2 0 2, having a big impact in a lot of these skirmishes, and that's exactly what Mad Lions want. Okay, now the, uh, hear me out for this one, right? Yesterday, a couple of early ganks, Mad Lions against G2. Looked good. Mad Lions pull things off, led by Al Yoya, once again, right, on that Lilia. Then we get to mid game and G2 skirmishes, and G2's mid game just outclass, and, you know, G2 then run away with the game. Now, after a few small mistakes, Mad Lions are landing play after play. This Aatrox is absolutely popping off. Solo killing White Knight. He doesn't even need support, so Al Yoya goes with the rest of the team, and now this mid game is starting to snowball very, very heavily in Mad Lion's favor. Yeah, Armut definitely having a much better time than he had up against Wonder yesterday. But also, like, can Astralis find their windows? Because they've been playing very reactionary League of Legends so far, which is fine, right? Like, ultimately, Mad Lions have the, have the comp that wants to be a little bit more proactive right now. Astralis want to slow things down, play for those big team fights around neutral objectives. But that number at the top of your screen, 32.5 to 26.4, like, that's getting a little bit more problematic as soon Mad Lions are going to start to stack up these oceans. Is it too big of a lead? It, uh, 
Is Not it, yet. I okay. mean, it is. It is very. It, it's a big lead to overcome, and I do definitely favor Mad Lion's position See, quite yeah. heavily here. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I think maybe the the biggest problem for Astralis is that White Knight's Ken is not going to have the huge impact that it wanted to. Because I, I think when you look at it, like uh, Nidalee, Kaisa, Twist Fate, like Kennen can destroy those champions if he gets in the back line with a flash. He has Ghost now too with that spellbook and a Proto Belt. Same thing as Zanzaro's going to come from the other side. Promise you too. Like these are all the tools they needed to dismantle Mad Lion's comp. But when Mad Lion's the one splitting you up that becomes a very different beast attack. Yeah, you need to team fight with this comp. If you never get to team fight and you're too far behind when you have to team fight, it's problematic. Astralis, whoo, that jab's a little early. We'll sneak away a dragon. That is a huge advantage but for them. Here's the thing, power. right, is look at how Mad Lions are playing it, right? They're not going to step into that 5v5 willingly. We're still a long way away from a potential Ocean Soul. So top lane, they're soaking up all those minions, force a TP out of Nuke Duck to make sure they can get those waves. Mid lane was also pushed. Mm. So Mad Lions, they step away from the 5v5, and they say, let's spread things out. Let's spread Astralis thin, because we have the global, right? We have the Twist Fate. We have Armut's power, and we can continue to bully this White Knight Kennen. Plus 80 CS for this Aatrox. And I'm going to double down on what you just said, Ender. Huge kudos to Mad Lions. They recognize the strength of the 5v5. Don't commit to it. Get the teleport away from Nuke Tech. Now apply pressure. You know nobody can go toe to toe with Armored Aatrox. So just keep twisting the life out of Astralis. Play the side lanes, play the map. Use the advantages you've accrued and don't step into your opponent's strengths. Right? Yeah, and, and now that they've taken down this inner turret, uh, we're, Baron's going to spawn in 20 seconds. I don't think we're going to see immediate pressure on towards that objective. But Mad Lions, because they have the Twisted Fate, and you'll be uh, confused now he has heal, but really he has TP yes. underneath that. Like the plays Mad Lions can run, we've seen like a G2 run a million times with, with Caps of Twist Fate, where you port into the bot lane tower, you 2v1 underneath the inhibitor, you take the inhibitor while your team's around Baron, then you have double TPs to come in there. Like you can affect every single point on the map because of those global abilities. Dude, I was going to make the G2 to comparison in play style and like thought process, you know, like using the strengths you have. And I was like, no, but I, I, I would I don't still, know. I would slow down on the play style comparisons. I was more saying like, that's a play that G2 runs that Mad Lions like pick up, pop it in. Thank you. That's that was why I hesitated. Though, is the wording right? It's a play that we have seen executed by them. And the reason that I like that, and the reason I like this discussion is expectations are for Mad Lions that with the coaching staff they have, with the roster, the players that they have, the experience across, you know, including Armut as well, they should be able to, you know, start this year at a higher high than they did last year, right? And it makes me excited to see that they had a good early game yesterday against YouTube despite not being able to do well in the mid game. And now today, just the way that they've played this game out, you can sort of clearly peer behind the curtain. And they're using this well. Look, not going to overcommit, not going to risk Get it. The vision, man. Like, Luxury vision, right? Yeah, I mean, this jungle just doesn't belong to Astralis anymore, and they can continue chipping down at these turrets, playing the pressure game. It's exactly what you want to see. Humanoid, pressure in mid, then moves down towards bot lane, can bounce between those waves, while top lane, as this tower gets lower and lower and lower, if one or two players are ever left isolated up here. If if Astralis pull two or three towards mid, immediately there's a Destiny Gate into top side. Immediately you're looking for that dive because they are so far forward inside the Astralis jungle. Yeah, no, now for me, it's about timing, right? It's about how long does it take Mad Lions to use the vision they have to push. Now it's much harder. We're 21 minutes into the game. They've got four towers already. There's only a couple inners left. Baron is available, but they're not playing for a soul just yet, but this is that point where you're like, don't give Astralis more time than you need to, to allow this team fight comp to scale up and get the item. Yeah, but at the same time, like, you see with all this pressure, like, Astralis no longer have access to their jungles. Like, that's all this gold being lost. Like, Mad Lions haven't gotten a kill in a while, but that gold lead continues to get larger and larger and larger. Yeah. Same, like, they haven't gotten a turret in a while. They got that bot lane one, but since then, nothing. But the gold lead continues to inflate. Whoa. 3,300 yeah. gold, the difference between White Knight and Armut. Uh, 1,000 gold between Humanoid and Nuke Duck. And 1,300 gold between Kazi and Jessica. BF Swords separating the two. Man, it is just suffocating. And you put yourselves now in Astralis's shoes. 
just try to hold on for dear life. Well, this will be the tower, right? Yeah. They're slow on the rotation. Promise Kuhn and are aren't quite there yet. They actually use the ultimate strength through the wave. This yes, yeah, gets interrupted by Armored's Q. Okay. Wild cards go out. So the Shockwave buys the tower. That's a good play for Astralis. They're not going to win a team fight with that Shockwave, but they buy themselves crucial time to continue farming as many minions as possible. Yeah. Now, uh, Astralis, they may want to move towards that Drake, but I don't think they actually want to. Because they got the second one, it delays the soul long enough. Like, it's very unlikely we see a dragon soul come through. So instead, don't again, don't spread yourselves thin. Because if you go down to that Drake, you're losing those inner towers. You're maybe losing an inhibitor tower on top. And if anything, if Mad Lions make the play for the dragon, which is expected, and you can see now on the map, it buys Astralis some time to potentially clear vision, to potentially put some wards down and see what they can do. See, there goes Zara and Promise Q almost instantly pushing into yeah. the darkness of their own jungle. Exactly, because because like you need to make sure Baron has some light on it. And also, maybe you get that top tower. That top tower is very low. Get a little bit of gold somewhere. Zanzar walks in. Again, very similar trade to the one we saw in last game. It's like, are there any camps I can take? No? Well, unfortunate. Now, because Mad Lions have such a big lead, they sort of uh, exude all this confidence. So they actually didn't even put five people on the dragon. They only had three people down there. So Armut was able to walk topside and make sure they didn't lose that tower. Because with his items, I don't even know if Astralis could have of him. And I mean, he, at the very least, if they kill him, he survives for 30 seconds and Mad Lions get their nexus. So. And, and that was the play you were talking about, where if Armut uh -oh, that's bad. pressure, Humanoid steps too far forward. Gold card goes up by some time. Defensive flash away for Humanoid. He's too far forward. He did not yet die in the side lane. Humanoid gets out with his life. Baits Astralis all the way forward. The slicing Maelstrom does little, does nothing, does not bother the Mad Whoa. Lions, but that shockwave was big. Imagine there was Does not a no 10,000 gold difference. Humanoids, go buy a lottery ticket because that is one of the luckiest escapes I have Dude, seen. I was just about to say, like, some things in the LEC never change. Like, yes. G2 always wins and Humanoid always dies. Like, <laughs> like even when winning, man, it's just funny. But he did not this he time got out around. somehow. What a miracle. I mean, it cost absolutely everything, right? Um, baited Astralis down. And you, you can see how that shockwave, how much better it could have been had there not been that 10,000 gold difference in Astralis. Well, I think, frankly, Humanoid lucky to get away with his life, and then Astralis lucky that not more damage took place sure. because Nuke Duck pulled the trigger at the right time. Very much indeed. All right, Mad Lions, it's time. Let's move to the Baron. Let's get it done. We are, we, we did the we did the dragon play. Let's run the same thing around the Baron now. Again, the dynamics of like side selection here do come a little bit into play because it is harder to secure Baron as a blue side team from an advantage just because of, like you look at the train, the wall you can hop over easily with something like Hecarim as opposed to if Hecarim's pushing for blue side, he has to go all the way through that river, you know, and you can get turned on very easily. I Still, didn't expect it this quick. I didn't yeah. expect it this quick. Mad Lions realizing this a little. They push forward. Kaiser will see Zanzara. Humanoid stepping forward. The dredge line goes right between Zanzara and Promise Q. Shockwave goes backwards. Humanoid's able to escape it thanks to the rocket belt. Teleport comes Arzy? inside the pit. White Knight is locked inside the pit. He flashes over the wall. He's now rejoined his team. This is one of the most awkward setups I have seen. But Astralis stop the Baron. Mad Lions, do they fancy themselves another shot? If you look at the minion waves, I think top and bottom is pushing towards Astralis. Yeah, let's yeah. run it back. So they've got some time to play with. Yeah, just do it again. They don't have TP, so they say, forget it. We're just going to go straight for this Baron one more time. Still ultimates on Zanzar and White Knight down to 7k HP. Do they steal Baron? Can they steal Baron? Slicing Maelstrom can be so impactful. Promise Q's got the Hex Flash available. 3,800 hit points on the Baron. Humanoid's got the Destiny for the Vision. He's going to rock a belt forward looking for the gold card. Doesn't have the range. Astralis do it again. Strike two. Mad Lions, will they try again? Yeah, I mean, this is what I was talking about, though, right? If Astralis are blue side, they will be forced into that fight. They're going to die there. I think if Mad Lions really wanted to make that play happen, you try to get Armut up around the uh, the tri brush north of that Baron Pit, get a flank, get some pressure on Astralis. You can sort of push, you know, that collapse onto them. You don't really give them as much of an angle to try and escape, but... Now Humanoid, after realizing he was just out of range for that gold card last time, now he's got the the Rocket Belt and the Rapid Fire. So all the range he possibly could ever want in order to get that gold card pick. 9,000 gold is the lead. That Rocket Belt plus Rapid Fire combo, that should set up um, the CC they need to, to pick off those final kills. 
And I gotta commend Mad Lions, because like, I was like listing the set of questions, but okay, let's see, how many wards do they have? How long will it take them to make this Baron play? And as I finally say, Ender, let's let's judge the setup. And they just went in. Force <laughs> Astralis is out because they know they've got the lead, they had the vision. The fact that um, TF can just use Destiny and get all the info that they need to dodge or avoid or, or engage, uh, they're feeling very confident. It is taking time, you know, because like they've had this lead for the better part of eight, nine minutes. Uh oh. But they are pushing, and now White Knight. He's, he's a very fast boy. Very, very <laughs> fast indeed. Uses the rocket belt. He's going to be able to use an E as well and get away to safety. Yeah. So I would actually, because things have slowed down a little bit for Mad Lions. I think they played a phenomenal game, but uh, this is one of the teams that you expect to do very well yes. in the league. So you would expect to win coming into a matchup like this. I want to see how well they can try to close out this game. Right now, Kimoy. Sees a lot of people headed his direction. Flash, exhaust, destiny, rocker. He's got yeah. so many tools to not die in the side lane. Yeah, because here's the thing, right? Is TP is not back up farm just yet, so they're going to try the Baron play once more. If this doesn't work out, then you put him into a side lane. Armut. Oh my god! The, the ward got placed. The control ward got placed. So Armut doesn't know that he was spotted over there. Astralis know he's in that position. Interesting. But what can they do with that information? They're aware that there's a split. Destiny's available for Humanoid. He's now casting information's up. Flash over the wall here from Humanoid. Is that, that's the damage they're onto Zanzara. Promiscue's locked, left alone without the rest of the team. Astralis are running. Karzy! From Karzy! The double kill for the Kaisa. Continues to chase down. He's a madman! The triple. Looking for the quadra. Jaskal's gonna block some damage as Armut that manages to pick up the fourth kill of the fight. Mad Lions using their lead and their advantage to squash Astralis beneath their boots. Well, I tested them. That's an A plus right there. Very nicely done. Would have been an A plus plus if they got Zanzara too, but they're gonna settle for Baron Nasher off of that one. Really nice team fight from them. Of course, they've got a massive lead running into that humanoid. Sacrifices his entire body just to convince Astralis to stick around in that fight and work wonders. I mean, it is true what you were saying just before the fight played out into that. The expectation is that Mad Lions would win this game very obviously before the match began. Then you see how the lead plays out. But what you start looking at is if you expect Mad Lions to be at the top of the table, near the top of the table as the split progresses, then you start judging how they play, how they win, their decision making. And there is some very promising signs throughout the course of this gameplay. Now, the last 10 minutes, depending on your perception and your opinions on how Mad Lions have played it, they've used the lead that they have had very effectively, and they haven't fallen into any traps. And I promise you, MSI champion is being run down. <laughs> oh, Yoya's gonna be able to step forward and come on, protect. We'll buy some time. Kaiser holds on to that dredge line. The third Drake is picked up, and Mad Lions now with Baron. Two minutes to play. They can start setting their sights on inhibitors. Yeah, they were just playing two lanes right now, which pretty much tells me they're looking to close this game out very shortly. Not bothering splitting up in towards three. They got three players in mid, a couple down towards bot. The humanoid, of course, the flexibility to move between both these towers. Even with the rapid fire, you can see he gets that extra range for the proc up against the tower. That one's down to just below 50 HP. Armut got himself so that 70 CS advantage. 650 gold bounty, by the way. He's never gonna die. 650 gold bounty for Kazi. He's got the hurricane completed. This okay. is the teleport coming in from White Knight. Lightning rush forward, slicing Maelstrom. Flash forward, Whoa. Kazi jumps onto the back line. He buys some time thanks to the stopwatch. The unstoppable onslaught comes up. That by time. Finally, Kazi goes down, but it doesn't matter. Smack him with a wallet. Mad Lions, ace. Astralis, Armut with the triple kill. They take down the inhibitor and they set their sights on the next. Yeah, that's a Karzy play if I've ever seen it. He's getting dove by, he's getting flanked. He says, I am going straight into the middle of all five players. He goes down at the end, but his sacrifice was not in vain. Mad Lions completely dismantle Astralis from beginning to end, and they're gonna take a game this season. I, <laughs> yeah, I got so pressure. I usually don't do these moments. Trevor's like, you got this, you got this. And I failed at the final moment. Oh. Unlike Mad Lions. What you didn't see, what you didn't see, because <laughs> you're obviously watching the game. I'm pointing at Ender saying, you take the win moment. You take the win moment. Oh, look, Mad Lions had such a huge advantage. They, they committed once they got their Baron. I think it was very, very clear for the better part of 15 minutes they were going to win that game. It was just a matter of time. 
if just you, go to break. I'm ashamed. <laughs> if you were to, if you were to to give like some closing thoughts on how they close the game out, what would be sort of like a, a gut reaction, immediate takeaway? Better than my win moment. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Key <laughs> player of the game nominees at LEC on Twitter, Armut, Alioya, and Kaiser. Uh, look, G2 Esports got off to a flying start. Can, can I read it? Can I try it? I'll redeem myself. G2 Esports got off to a flying start with Reckless, but we'll see if their run continues against SK Gaming. Bounce back. Great. Absolutely fantastic. Woo! Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs>
Welcome back to the LEC. Mad Lions bounce back from the game they had yesterday. And Armut, I have one question for you. I mean, I have many questions for you, but Hello. first, how do you go from, hi, how do you go from <laughs> knocking Mad Lions out of play-ins last year to joining them in 2021? Uh, wait, what? Uh, I mean, how? How do Sorry. you go from knocking them out of play-ins? Yeah. I mean, they were a really strong team and like they were having so much fun. I mean, we beat them, but I think I did some good job there. <laughs> so I wanted to <laughs> join their roster, which is, I think is really strong right now. So I felt like we can make something really good here, like in game or out, out of the game. So I just joined here. Yeah, a traumatizing malfight. I guess it's better to be <laughs> on this team than yeah. against you. But um, uh, Madayans isn't just a name, uh, I feel. I mean, we know about the crazy, fantastic personalities that the players have. So how how are you getting along with them so far? <laughs> I mean, I think I'm quite fit to them. So we are having really so much fun. Even we lose to G2 yesterday, like we were having fun. I mean, of course, we felt a bit sad because we were expecting to win. I mean... We had so many high expectations from us, ourselves. I mean, we lose. I mean, G2 is a pretty good team, so it's fine. But we were having fun all the time. So I'm really happy with the team, my yeah. team. Learning after every game, of course. And we are very yeah. happy to welcome you in the LEC. You're not the first Thank player uh, from TCL joining the LEC, yeah. actually. So what do you think about the influence the uh, TCL had over the LEC and the bonds created over the years? Hmm. That's really hard qu question. <laughs> I mean, I think TCL, <laughs> of course, is not like LAC, but I think it's a pretty good region. Uh, there is like many good players are getting better there. So it's good support for LAC to pick pick up some players that can that have really good potential to play in like better regions. So I think TCL right now is making good players for bigger regions, that's I would say. I fully agree. A region on the rise here. And people noticed from your performance here, would it surprise you if I tell you that you are the player of the game here? I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I mean, I was expecting that. I was kind of monster this game. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Aatrox broken or you being broken, you think? I mean, I don't think Aatrox is broken, but uh, we had like two straight and Nidale, which helped me a lot in the game. So I became monster. I farmed everything. I killed everything. I was really strong and I was like, just give me kills, I'm not dying this game. Like, because my pick was really good into their comp. Mm -hmm. I agree. Great choice here and great game from you, Armut. Welcome you. again to the LEC. Thank you so much for the Thank you so much. And good luck tomorrow against me. Thank you. Bye-bye. We're bye. going to take a break now and we'll come back in a few minutes for SK versus YouTube. Thank you.